How China Reinvented the Space Station The Heavenly Palace in China It is significant that the Taingong is the most sophisticated space station that humanity has ever launched. However, the Chinese have reimagined the space station for the 21st century, and this is how they've done it. It's not something that people in the West comprehend or know that much about. Space stations have been launched since the early 1970s, but the Tiangong is the first to stand out as something that resembles science fiction rather than the status quo, which is just a submarine in space. Now the questions arising are, how China reinvented the space station? What innovations did it bring? Hi guys, welcome to our channel. Today we will discuss China's remarkable changes in the space station and its reinvention. But before starting the video, if you are new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon so you will never miss an update in the future. Let's start the video. Did you know that the first space station ever to be deployed was a single module Soviet design named the Salute, which was built inside the hollowed out upper stage of a massive Saturn V moon rocket. NASA surpassed this two years later in 1973 with their station named Skylab. But the first modular space station ever to be deployed was called MISR and it happened in 1986. Even with the Soviet Union's fall occurring amid the project, it would take 10 years to complete the seven modules that make up the MIS station. In the creation of space stations, the Russians would firmly establish themselves as the leaders. Thus, when we eventually reach the space station that we are all familiar with today, the International Space Station, given that NASA had essentially no experience while the Russians had decades of experience with several space stations, we can see that it is very similar to Russia's mirror. Given how obvious the inspiration for this design approach was, I don't think it's incorrect to consider the International Space Station to be merely version 2.0. From Salute to Skylab to Mir to ISS, there wasn't much of a design, progression or advancement. Now let's fast forward to China's Tiangong. There have been only around 20 years between it and the International Space Station, but it already seems like a century of advancement. These days, the Taangong is made up of three modules that combine to form a T-shaped space station, measuring 55 meters in length and 39 meters in width, orbiting 400 kilometers above Earth. The main command module, the Tiane, was launched in April 2021. The Wenxin Experiment Module, which was installed in July 2022, functions as an airlock and crew quarters research lab combined. The Menon module, which joined the station in November 2022, is a twin of the Win and serves only as a research and experiment space. As far as space stations go, this is an incredibly rapid pace of construction. It took Russia and NASA two years just to get the ISS to a state where it was habitable, and it was a 10-year international endeavor for ISS to reach a state of completion. And while it might seem like this station came out of nowhere, this is phase three of a plan that China started back in the nines that they called Project 921. This is kind of like China's blueprint to conquer the space phase. One of the plans called for the creation and debut of crew-capable rockets and spacecraft, which would become the Long March 2 and the Shen Jiu, both of which launched in 1999. This is the name of the rocket series. Long March comes from Mad Dong's legendary career as a combat hero and commander of the People's Red Army. By 2003, the name she meant Divine Vessel during the Shino 5 mission. This system sent the first Chinese Chiona into low Earth orbit. Phase 2 of the plan, which was a practice phase by Shino 7, started with this. After the Chinese completed their first spacewalk in their extravehicular suits, the nation started deploying test modules which resembled tiny space stations. Chinese crews would practice docking maneuvers between the test modules and the scene during their first extended stays in orbit. Around this same period, China also began developing the Qinzhou spacecraft, also known as the Heavenly Ship, a 6,500 kilograms cargo transport vehicle. This spacecraft was built to operate on the Long March 7, a contemporary rocket that replaced the 2F, which was first launched in 2016. Currently, we are in phase three of the plan, which involves developing and assembling a new space station. Heavenly Palace, also known as the Tiangong, thus, what is the reason behind China's great desire to establish its space station? Two, it has to do with the Chinese being forbidden from the International Space Station, which is contradictory to the literal name of the station. 
first because it's incredibly cool who wouldn't want their private hangout in space. However, the US Congress approved the Department of Defense Act in 2011, which explicitly stated that NASA could not use its budget to work in any capacity with China. As a result, the US concluded that China was not allowed to visit the station. The US was more concerned that China would steal their ideas or spy on them than anything else, which is understandable given that both countries have been heavily involved in a lot of dubious spy activities for the better part of a century. The main justifications for the US's actions involve human rights concerns and national security. Thus, the Chinese decided to build their own instead of putting up with them. Qinggong, the first thing you'll notice about Taingong's interior, particularly when contrasted to the ISS, is how roomy and open it appears to be. With a very simple and modern form, Taingong has an unusual feature. Its exterior diameter, which is around 4.2 m or 14 feet across, is almost the same as that of the ISS modules. The difference, then, is in the volume of internal space that is available. For one thing, the ISS modules are usually significantly shorter and have more connections between them, which leads to bottlenecks in the construction. There are several causes for this. For instance, the WAN and Menon modules are both 18 meter or 59 feet in length, whereas the Destiny Lab on the ISS, which serves as our astronauts' primary operating facility, is 8.4 meter or 28 feet long. For two reasons, the technology of Tiangong is simply more advanced and smaller, allowing it to fit into a smaller space. For instance, rather than requiring a maze of cables to connect, many of the technologies in Changgong will link wirelessly. This central structure, below the first module of Tiangong, that entered orbit safely in April 2021, is known as the Tianhe, which translates to Harmony of the Heavens. The Tianhe is a 20-ton structure with a 4.2 meter maximum diameter that is equipped with all the components needed to operate as a space station and house a three-person crew. Its advanced docking node, airlock, robotic arm, and propulsion systems are all powered by solar panels. The core module is divided into three primary components, beginning with the smallest. A spherical multi-D doing node is present. This contains four ports, one of which is visibly fixed to the TAN permanently. The station's primary docking port is located across from the core module. The twin research lab berthing ports for the multi-D doing node are located here, and the Shenhe crew vehicle can dock there to access the core module's two side ports. There is an additional crew docking port on the node at the bottom port. This is for usage in crew handover situations, where there are two groups of three Tiona using the station at the same time, and the upper port isn't meant for docking. It's a hatchway. The crew uses it to leave the station and move up to the slender, cylindrical portion of TAN during spacewalks. That's all for today. If you liked the video, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up and share it.